So today we're going to talk a little bit about the core, do a little clinical insight with the core, uh, something that we see quite frequently clinically, um, and this ranges both from uh, people with neck and upper back issues to, to lower back issues and everything pretty much in between. Uh, things that we've talked about before, it kind of always comes back to the core. Uh, it gets played out a lot, you know, if people put a lot of attention, like they want to be stronger in the core. and. Um, I think to start it off, basically, what is the core? Uh, the core is the diaphragm, which is the top of the, the core. So that's a muscle that goes all the way across the top, or it comes across the bottom of the rib cage, the top of the abdominal cavity. It goes all the way down to the pelvic floor. So there's uh, muscles as well at the bottom of the pelvic floor. So that's the top and bottom of the core. So you can think of it like a canister. And then there's muscles that go all the way around, and that would be the sides of the canister. So a lot of times people, when they think of core, they think just strictly of their rectus or their six-pack muscles. And those are part of the core, but definitely not all of the core. And that's sometimes when people run into problems, and that's when sometimes injury can occur, is they become too dominant, actually, in the rectus muscles, and maybe not using some of those other muscles as as much as they should. Um, so one thing to do if we start off, if we think about that canister, we have the top and the bottom and the sides. If you envision like a pop can, you want to have your pop can have a full circle all the way around. You don't want to have a dent in your pop can. So if you look at it here and you, you put a dent in the pop can, that's going to um, kind of create some instability in the core. Uh, so you want to try to uh, maintain a proper canister on all sides and try to keep uh, not having a dent. And typically when people do dent, they, they kind of over arch their low back and that's when they kind of create an energy leak. It leads to muscle imbalances and it can create injury and uh, also lack of performance. Another thing when we talk about the core, if we come back to that pop can analogy, uh, canister, uh, if you take a pop can that is completely full and unopened and then you take another pop can that maybe you just cracked open and you have sitting there, uh, if you were to stand on those pop cans, the one that you have not opened yet is going to withstand a lot more force, and that's because it has a lot more pressure. So um, when you are dealing with the core, you don't want to suck in, you're losing pressure there, you really want to um, almost brace, it's called like super stiffness, so you really want to brace and create that abdominal pressure, and that's going to help uh, create, generate more force and uh, create more stability for for the low back and other other areas. Um, so, if we flip this around here um, and kind of relate this into like clinical um, insights, uh, a lot of times people will get tightness. We don't have the muscles up here, but like the upper trapezius, uh, these muscles up here, people will carry their stress there. A lot of times, you know, they'll sleep wrong and they'll get a strain and they can't turn their neck all the way, um, or the, it's from a weightlifting injury or exercise or something, they get um, an injury kind of up in this area. And typically they'll feel it from the top corner of their shoulder blade up into the neck area. And the reason for that a lot of times is they're overusing those muscles. And when they do that, they're kind of using those muscles to, to breathe and holding all this tension up here as opposed to kind of just letting this relax and keeping that pressure down in the core and the diaphragm. So. At rest, ideally, that diaphragm is just the, the only muscle that's used for breathing. So at rest, you shouldn't see a person's shoulders going up and down. That's creating more tone. And one repetition of just breathing like that with your shoulders isn't much. But if you think about over and over throughout the day, it just leads to, to more and more tone. It's like if you were going to do a bicep curl all day long, maybe with just five pounds. If you did it repeatedly, you're going to have, you know, a lot of tone in the bicep by the end of the day. So um, that's placing importance on the, the diaphragm. Another thing that you can kind of see, look, that's, that's what you'd see like with the upper neck, the upper back area. Um, sometimes these muscles that go along the spine will become um, overly, will, we become overly dependent on them just because we're not stabilizing properly through the core with all of these muscles. So the body's good at compensating. So it, recruits these other muscles to try to help stabilize. Uh, you can also see this in the low back. So these, these muscles that sometimes become very tight along either side of the low back, 
Uh, sometimes you can just visualize that. You know, if someone has their shirt off, you can see a lot of tightness through here. Um, so ideally, we don't want to use those muscles just to stabilize all the time. Yes, they're muscles, they should be used for movement, but it shouldn't be 100% of the time for stabilizing. So if we can uh, recruit these muscles all the way around as a unit, uh, we become less reliant on the muscles that go up and down along the spine. Um, uh, just going back, so uh, with the, the rectus or the, the six pack muscles, if you were to do a movement, you don't want to just isolate uh, a single muscle all at once. Uh, when you do a movement, you want to incorporate this globally. So you're going to use all of these muscles together uh, combined as a unit and that's going to help stabilize and that's going to lead to decreased injury because we don't have as much emphasis placed on these uh, other muscles that are trying to compensate and stabilize. And then if you're looking for increased performance, you're going to be more efficient um, and it's going to, to create less energy leaks so that way you can kind of transfer that force throughout.